Today in the news, we got chips on chips for AMD, a modded GPU, and the shortest lived architecture. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD, and wow, we got a wild rumor on our hands. On the CPU side, the company is already very familiar with multi-chip module designs, aka chiplets. It started with Epic and Threadripper for the first generation of Zen to the chiplet-based Ryzen 3000 and 5000 CPUs that we know now on the desktop platform. Anyways, it has been rumored that AMD would move that technology into their graphics products too. Many patents have popped up supporting that, and in fact, the latest one was filed about a year and a half ago and was just published about a month ago on December 31st of last year. The patent in question describes how multiple GPU chiplets can be connected via a high bandwidth passive crosslink called HBX. It wouldn't connect the actual fixed function hardware like the compute units, but rather it would unify the cache. Every module would have its own set of L1 and L2 cache only accessible by the one chiplet, but the L3 cache is actually shared via the crosslink that we talked about earlier. Knowing that AMD has banked hard on the L3 cache for their GPUs with the introduction of the Infinity cache, the decision to share each GPU's Infinity cache makes sense. In that setup, one of the chiplets would be like a master chiplet. That chiplet would be in direct communication with the CPU, while all of the other chiplets would receive their commands via the master chiplet. This is drastically different from their current chiplet design on the CPU. Anyways, about that wild rumor, it comes from Twitter user KeplerL2 via videocards.com. He said that from what he knows, the RDNA 3 based Navi 31 family of GPUs would have 80 compute units and that the two top SKUs would have two chiplets on board for a total of 160 compute units. Wow. Now, Navi 31 is a thing. We've seen the name before in drivers and AMD documentation, but using chiplets on a GPU right now, I don't think it's gonna happen just yet, at least not in the mainstream market. We know that Nvidia plans to use the technology on their Hopper family of GPUs, but those are reportedly not coming until 2023 slash 2024. Before that, the green team is sticking to monolithic designs with their Ada Lovelace UARC coming next. What do you guys think? Chiplet GPUs at the end of this year slash early next year for AMD, or are we looking at RDNA 4 for that? And lastly, for Navi 3X, according to fellow YouTuber Red Gaming Tech, the performance target for RDNA 3 is actually even larger than the jump from RDNA to RDNA 2. Instead of doubling the performance, RDNA 3's performance target is 2.5 times the performance of RDNA 2. Wow. Speaking of GPUs, another YouTuber did something pretty insane. He took his RTX 2070 and converted it into a GPU that doesn't exist. An RTX 2070, but with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. Yep, he purchased some Samsung memory chips from AliExpress with double the capacity, moved some resistors on the PCB that would enable him to actually uh, use these 16 gigabytes of memory, and boom, a GPU that never was, now is again. Unfortunately, this mod is pretty much just a novelty. After the upgrade, the card's performance turned out about 30% slower than one with only 8 gigabytes of memory. Moving on to some smartphone news, it looks like one company might make a cold, cold decision. Quan Bong Seok, I'm sorry if I messed up that name, LG's CEO, sent out a memo to LG employees mentioning that the competition in the global market for mobile devices is getting fiercer, and it's about time for LG to make a cold judgment and the best choice. LG is actually considering all measures like sale, withdrawal, downsizing, or simply shutting down its mobile phone division. It's true that the company hasn't been super popular in some time. While they have been a mainstay in the market, their popularity kind of peaked at the era of the LG G4. No decisions have been taken so far, but personally, I would hate to see them stop making smartphones. The LG Wing is pretty much the most creative smartphone of 2020, in my opinion, and they had some cool dual screen phones in years past that I actually really liked. What do you guys think? Do you own an LG phone? Let me know down below. 
Moving on, let's talk Intel. So Rocket Lake is coming very soon to desktops, even though all we got right now is some slides from the company. And while we're moving into February, we know that Alder Lake is also coming this year. So we only got about 10 months for Intel to actually release Rocket Lake S and announce Alder Lake S, and technically also ship Alder Lake S. Rocket Lake S is rumored to be available in March, and according to videocards.com, only six months later, the company will reveal the details on Alder Lake S, six months. With that, Intel will of course reveal the new LGA 1700 socket with a new 600 series chipset. The new chipset will be compatible with DDR5 memory and apparently PCIe Gen 5. For once, Intel should be ahead of the curve in terms of tech. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. I'm Snows with boogers in his nose. I'm kidding, I'm just a little bit sick. Stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next one.